Hello and welcome to Copilot News Show, episode number two. That's right, we are crushing it. But this is where Todd and I jump in every time there's enough news to just catch you up real quick on what's going on without all the extra flub blub. So to that end, let's jump right in. And to begin with, we're going to tell you that AI builder credits are going away. What? I know. Um, so if you've been using AI with Power Apps, Power Automates, AI prompts, AI models, all of those have been built based, built something on AI uh, builder credits for a long time, since 2019. And those credits came with uh, your licenses, so premium licenses included those, and you could buy additional capacity. Starting November 1st, you can no longer buy those licenses. So no more buying those. Uh-oh. Uh, if you're currently buying them, you can continue to buy them for another year. Um, also, all the licenses that came with your uh, Power Apps, Power Automate premium licenses, those all go away as well. And so we're going to have to start using Copilot credits, right? So those, uh, we used to call those Copilot messages. They renamed those last month. Anyway, that whole licensing story is going to change very quickly on us. We got that. One of the things that I'm most excited about, I put it first on my list to talk about, is new Copilot things in OneDrive. So love me some OneDrive. Got OneDrive all over. Got it on the phone. Got it on my computer. Got it in the web. And now we've got some new Copilot capabilities coming out in all of those places. They've given us a little floating agent like they introduced to SharePoint here uh, a couple of months ago. So it's ever, ever, everywhere we go inside of OneDrive, we've got the little guy there just, just waiting to talk to us. It's got some basic uh, prompts built in, like summarize this file. So you can select between one and five files, summarize this file, compare the files, make me a fact about these files, things like that. But then you also have your, your prompt box. So if you're a, a, a serious prompter, a, a, a well-refined prompter, you can go in there and ask it to do stuff on its own in there, have it do whatever you'd like. Uh, the thing that I'm the most excited about in this though, is you can pick a file and you can tell it, make an audio overview of this. So you can tell it to take a file and say, give me an audio or an executive summary of this, and it will do that for you. Or my favorite is make a podcast out of this. So I can pick any file and it will create two uh, AI generated voices and they will discuss the contents of this file for you. Now that last bit is available on the mobile device and the web, and it takes a minute or two for those to get generated. So you, you got some time, uh, but go ahead and check those out. Really excited about this functionality. I love seeing all of these great AI things making their way into OneDrive and seeing parity across all the, the platforms. Very good stuff. Is that little guy shipped yet? The little bubble at the bottom? I know with our SharePoint agents, it's finally show, started showing up. How about with OneDrive? Well, I do feel a little bad. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, supposedly it's out. They announced it last week. So I'm just waiting every day. I refresh my OneDrive page, just hoping that little guy shows up in there for me. Next up, um, we've got agent flows, right? So if you've been building with Power Automate Cloud Flows for a long time, you know, hopefully you've heard that over in Copilot Studio, basically all the Power Automate goodness went over there and they call those agent flows. And a lot of us said, all right, well, who cares? It's the same tool. Why would I go there instead of here? There's some licensing reasons you might as well. but What's really interesting is they kind of said, hey, we're creating these agent flows and some of the new AI story is going to be told through the agent flows. And so with that, they have shipped some of those new features and they fall under the umbrella of human in the loop, right? Human in the loop, very important concept, oh, right? Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, if you're mistrusting of AI, right? You need human in the loop to let you validate that, hey, it's doing what you want to do, which Todd and I think highly recommended to anyone who's building anything yeah. agentic at this point. With that, um, we now have the ability to use requests for information. So this is a system where you say, hey, go get this information from the user, it is going to send that over to them, and it's uh, going to show up in Outlook so they can fill it out in Outlook and then just submit it right back. Uh, feels a lot like an adaptive card that they're building for us, but I haven't looked at the tech that closely. And then they also have AI approvals where you can go in and define, hey, AI, you're going to get this you know, expense report or Todd's travel request. Here's the criteria. Basically, it says, don't let Todd do anything. Deny, deny, then, deny. Deny, <laughs> deny, deny. And then let the AI make determinations and do approvals, auto approvals, if they meet all the criteria. So that's just two examples of some new functionality that we really take advantage of but it is over in the agent flow store. Yeah, I really like the uh, the human in the loop, baking that into the functionality. I think that's really going to help build trust with the AI stuff. The more people see it, the more they're going to realize the AI is doing a good thing. I'm a, I'm a fan. So uh, speaking of agents and, and working, I was introduced to a new phrase this week. Uh, maybe you've heard it before. We've all heard of vo uh, vibe coding. I was introduced to the phrase vibe working. So now inside of our favorite uh, Microsoft 
365 applications, in this case, just Excel right now. There's this idea of having an agent mode inside of Excel where you can just ask it to do things for you and it will make pivot tables and make executive summaries and all kinds of things like that. Um, and it's one of those crazy AI things where it goes off, like you tell it to do something, something really fancy, again, like the executive dashboard, and it just goes off on its own and it comes back a few minutes later and kind of taps you on the shoulder and says, here's that thing that you asked for. Uh, really like that. And again, this is kind of like the OneDrive thing where I just like having AI right there where I'm working. And when a, a difficult task comes up, of course, I could do all this stuff on my own, mostly. Um, but knowing that AI is just right there, I can just click the link. In this case, you have to go in, you have to add an add-in, and you might have to be in the Frontier rollout. I'm not entirely sure about that. I've seen that you have to, but I've seen it in places where I'm not, so not entirely sure. Uh, but then it just shows up in there, and you can just ask it to do things for you. I really think this is this is pretty cool, and I've heard that's going to be coming out for Word here soon. I haven't seen it in Word yet, uh, but I'm really excited to see what they uh, what they can do for us there. Yeah, I was so excited for this. I had like 15 free minutes uh, last Thursday, and I was like, I'm going to try this thing 15. out. 15. <laughs> yeah, 15 whole minutes. And so I did, I just dumped in a spreadsheet of sales data that I had AI make for me previously anyway. And I'm like, you know, my boss gave me the sales data. He said he needs forecast. And then for his boss, she needs a uh, bunch of charts and dashboards over this. And I was like, all right, well, I don't know what any of that means. So I just put that in my prompt. Here's what I need. Here's my table. And this Todd's point, like it went and thought for like five or seven minutes. And then it's like, but ah. And it gave me a whole new worksheet with all of that dashboard and forecast. Love it. I, it kind of melted my brain how much it did on, for something in the Frontier program, which is still very new. So next up, we have got my friend um, Flow Builder. So it's another one of those announcements I was kind of sleeping on. But so Flow Builder shows up over in Copilot chat. And you're like, well, Flow, Power Automate? Yeah, right? So the same way that over in Copilot chat, you can create agents. You can actually go in there and add the uh, flow builder and then you just use natural language. So I just went in and said, all right, I need a flow that every time I get an email from Todd, it deletes the email and it sends what? an email back and says, I can't stand you. <laughs> and like, that was literally it. That was my whole prompt. It and explains a lot. Yep. Yeah. Right. Like two minutes later, it's like done. I just hit save <laughs> and it was up and running. So it understood the context of the tools available to it. I didn't tell it what tools to use. I didn't tell it. How to do I that was literally my whole prompt and it spit it out. Like this is this is very interesting. Uh, so this whole idea of flow builder where I'm just going to quickly build automations using natural language. Very, very, very interesting, right? And it's part of your M365 copilot licensing. So go check that one out. Like it's up. Yeah, that one sounds like magic. And, and I say that about AI all the time because I'm constantly amazed. Like I, I like I, I like to tell folks when people find out I play with AI, they're like, oh, come on, is it that cool? Once a week, AI knocks my socks off. And this is this is m might be this week's uh, sock moment is uh, checking this out. This one out. This is pretty cool. No more emails from you. I'm excited. <laughs> So we didn't get any products getting renamed this week. Uh, so I was a little disappointed. Microsoft must be, somebody must have be taken the, the week off. But we did get some new logos for all of our favorite Office applications. So after what seven long years uh, of of suffering through the same logos, we finally got new logos. I know in all the circles I travel in, everybody was asking about new logos. Everybody was wanting new logos. Well, the time is here. We do have all new logos. Um, they look a lot like the old logos are very similar, um, but I'm not sure when they're going to show up in the wild. So keep an eye on them, but do look forward to all those support calls when all of the word and Excel and outlook, uh, icons change on people's desktops and they'll be like, where did outlook go? Where did word go? Uh, but do look forward to those, uh, those new logos from Microsoft. The sarcasm. I'm just, I'm gonna leave it all alone. That was, that was perfect. You painted the perfect picture. <laughs> Uh, we also, a couple weeks ago, we saw an announcement about M365 Premium and how it tied to Copilot. And I was like, oh gosh, another license to learn, another thing. Uh, make my classes even longer. I don't get done as it is. And uh, it turns out that M365 Premium is on the personal side. So if you only do M365 for business, you don't care about it. But the, what they really did was they took the M365 Personal Family Plan and they combined it with the Copilot Pro license into one little unit. Um, the pricing is better now because they combine them in. Um, so I don't know if you're on the personal side, if you're paying for a 365 family, you should probably go check it out. It's get you some of that co-pilot 
goodness uh, for different, better price point. I don't know. It's it's the personal side. We don't really care. But since it's confusing, I want to make sure you guys all knew about it. Yeah, I've, and I've got a personal side I, I've shared with my family, so I'm not definitely have to check this out. And and I love having just having Copilot follow me everywhere I go. So now when I jump over to the personal profile, give me some Copilot. I love it. Speaking of loving it, if you love this format, let us know. If you don't love this format, I suppose let us know too, but but be kind about it. We're very gentle souls. Uh, but we would love to know what you think about this quick rapid fire uh, co-pilot thing. Um, also, you can go to the URL below, and I hope the URL is actually below down there. Um, and we've got a blog post with links to all the things we talked about. We didn't make any of this up this time. Uh, so you can you can go out there and find out all the, the things that we talked about. And there's also a newsletter you can sign up for. So if you're sick of hearing Shane's voice and you just want the written version of this, you can sign up for a newsletter and it's going to have all this stuff and all the links and all that. What would be really sad is if they took the newsletter, <laughs> you, put it in OneDrive, and then had it create a podcast around our newsletter to read the news because they don't want to hear our that. Uh, challenge great. accepted. I'm totally going to do that. That would be awesome. I can't wait to see how that, I wonder if it'll give me a better voice. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, okay. And we had a, a ton of you signed up for the, the newsletter after last week's episode or last time's episode. So uh, love and kisses to all of you. We, uh, we love y'all. And uh, Whenever we get a whole basket full of co-pilot goodness for you, we'll put another one of these out. So let us know what you think.